Hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Sophia Metropolis. I am an artist and today I'm gonna make a video about how I make my videos. A lot of people make videos like this and I didn't really think that people wanted to see a video like this from me, but I said in one of my recent videos asking if this is something that people wanted and y'all really seemed to want it. I got a bunch of comments saying that you guys wanted to see it, so we're gonna go through it. It's gonna be kind of confusing for me to make because I'm gonna try to make the video and talk about making the video at the same time, so um, I'm gonna do my best. In this video, there's a couple things that we're gonna go through. I'm gonna talk about the equipment that I use and the materials that I use. I'm also gonna talk about my background and how I learned all these things and how long I've been doing all these things. I think those are important to note. Hello, I'm checking in from the edit bay, which is my bed right now. And I have to let you guys know that this video turned out to be long as hail. So we're gonna do a two part video. This video is part one where I talk about my background, my equipment, and my planning process using Notion. And then in next week's video, which is going to come out on Friday, I'm going to talk about my actual edit process on how I make my videos. So anyway, back to the good stuff. Okay, so as far as my desk setup goes, I'm going to do like a materials rundown and my desk setup in the same breath, I guess. So to start, this is the camera that I use. It is the Sony a6400, means that it has the flip up screen. I think the older versions don't have the flip up screen. It has a Deity D4 Duo microphone, which is a dual capsule microphone, which means there's a microphone on this side and on that side. Behind me, we've got a soft box light. It's obviously very bright, which is why it's blown out. But when I'm sitting at the table, it lights me correctly. Then on my desk, I've got a Manfrotto tripod with a hybrid thingy, which I love a lot. I've got a 2019 MacBook Pro. I've got an adapter, right, because I don't have the SD card slot, amazing. And then I use a five terabyte external hard drive for my videos. As far as the rest of my filming setup, I've got this ring light that I use, which often I point away from me because it's too harsh on my face. And then I have this phone mount that I have a GoPro Hero 9 on. So this is the GoPro Hero 9. I bought it because it's got the, this front LCD screen, but honestly, you could probably get away with a seven or an eight. I also bought it because it was 4K and the camera that I'm using is 4K. But honestly, I don't completely love it, but it works for what I've got right now. Before I got the GoPro, I was using a webcam that I had bought a few years ago for like maybe 30, 40 bucks that since the pandemic and everything went online for Zoom and everything, the price went up to like $120. So I actually sold that on eBay for, I wanna say $90. So that was cool, made a little profit on that. And I used some of that money to buy the new GoPro. So I'm happy with that decision. And part of the reason I got the GoPro also is because it does have better in-body stabilization. So for videos where I leave the house, which I haven't made that many of recently, but even still, I can bring that instead. And it's a little more subtle than carrying around my big camera and then also just better in-body stabilization. Also just a few more details as far as the camera, it is the Sony a6400. I have a kit lens, I don't use it very often. The kit lens is the lens that comes with it. I actually bought my kit lens later. My primary lens that I'm using right now that I use most of the time is a Sigma f1.4 16 millimeter, which means it's wide angle and f1.4 refers to the focal length. So I'm usually in focus and my background is a little bit blurry. My biggest problem with this camera is it's a mirrorless camera. It's my first mirrorless camera. I've only had DSLRs before this and I haven't bought a lot of digital cameras in my life. The last camera I bought was the Canon T1i and I got it in 2009. First time I ever tried to start my channel, I used that camera, but it didn't have autofocus and it didn't have a flip out screen. So I couldn't see myself or it did have autofocus, but it, I couldn't control it without being in, in the shot. So it was a big problem. It didn't work. <laughs> but the Sigma F1.4 lens, I really love. It's one of my favorites. The only problem with this entire camera setup, lens camera and lens setup, is neither of them have stabilization. So the camera doesn't have in-body stabilization and the lens doesn't have OSS, which is like optical steady shot or something like that. So it's really shaky if it's not on a tripod in any capacity, even if I'm just holding it in my hand. That's my biggest critique. One day I'll probably upgrade my camera. I like to think of this camera as like the low end of the high end camera stuff. It's not a low end camera by any means, but it's definitely not the most expensive version of any of these parts. And I actually had the camera before I started the YouTube channel, but I started the YouTube channel in part because I was like, why do I have all of this equipment and I'm not using it for what I should be using it for, which is this YouTube channel. So I'm glad that that worked out. Also, a lot of these things that I do now are upgrades from things that I had before. I've always been very into tech and camera stuff specifically. So like a lot of these things that I invest in for my setup are things that I invested in 
prior to even having the YouTube channel. They're just things that I think matter to me, like good lighting and a quality camera. I originally bought this camera to do photography for the products that I was selling for my store a few years ago, and the store itself paid for this equipment. And that includes the camera, the tripod, the studio softbox light, all this stuff was investments that I made from my business expenses into my tech equipment because I care about tech equipment and I'm like, I, I love it. So that's where all that comes from. As far as my background in video making and filmmaking, I went to a performing arts high school in New York City called Frank Sinatra School of the Arts where you had a creative major. And so my major was film and media at Frank Sinatra where they taught us how to make videos. And that consisted of two to three periods of film class per day throughout the four years of school. So a lot of it in the beginning was pre-production focused and we did storyboarding and we did script writing and we did production planning. And then we would go into production and film it with our classmates and our friends, make this video. And then we would go into post-production where we would edit and color grade and audio adjust and all that stuff. It got increasingly more detailed as you went through the program and less structured. So in the beginning, they were really serious about having our storyboards and our scripts and everything. And then as you go through the program, at least when I went in 2009, um, as you go through the program, you get less instruction and more freedom to create your own stuff. And I always was really passionate about that. So I did end up doing a fellowship with the Tribeca Film Institute in 2012, where I got to work with a mentor and collaborate with a bunch of other high school filmmakers in New York City. There were 20 of us. We got to go to events and go to the film festival and all that stuff. It was a really exciting learning opportunity and it really made me passionate about filmmaking at the time. And I always thought I was gonna be a professional editor, which is funny because I kind of am, even though I eventually got to art school and was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. If you wanna learn about that whole story, that's a different video. But in high school, I learned to edit on iMovie, which then we moved to Final Cut Pro 7. And I was a big fan of Final Cut Pro 7. And then Final Cut Pro 10 came out and I still had Final Cut Pro 7 for a while and I like didn't have to switch to Final Cut Pro 10. I really do not like it. I don't like the interface. I feel like it's just an elevated iMovie and I, I just don't like it, okay? Personally, I just don't like it. But I didn't make videos for a couple of years and then in college, after I switched majors to fine art, eventually all of my peers heard my filmmaking background and they were like, you have to take video art, you have to go into this again. So I took a video art class, which was below my expectations, frankly, but that's a different <laughs> that's a different story altogether. But there I learned Premiere, which effectively is the same as Final Cut Pro 7. So I picked up Premiere and have been using it pretty consistently since then. I did for about a year edit professionally for a YouTuber, which was a generally positive experience for me, but I was pretty taken advantage of financially. So when I no longer continued to do that, I eventually realized that doing it on my own was just, it just made sense for me to do it on my own because I was like, why am I doing this for somebody else? Anyway, so that's sort of what led me to here. So I came into YouTube knowing how to edit from almost a decade of editing and then how to edit YouTube videos specifically because I was doing it professionally for another creator. So I definitely have a lot of background. I was 14 when I learned to edit. So I've been editing now for a 11 years, which is pretty crazy. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I do in my system of editing. I do have to say, I'm kind of a lazy editor these days, and that's because I am a procrastinator and I do rush sometimes. And I will rewatch my videos pretty frequently and get really pissed off at myself because there are things that slip between the cracks. Like sometimes I'll start a thought and then not finish the thought, but then start the thought again with a different sentence structure and I'll forget to cut the first one out entirely. And then I'll rewatch the video and you'll hear me start a sentence and then not finish the sentence and then completely start the sentence over again. And it's just, it's bad habits that drive me crazy. <laughs> um, so if you ever see me do that, please don't call me out on it because I know. I already know, okay? And I'm already mad at myself about it, so I don't wanna address it. Also, one time there was a video that had my GoPro shot upside down for like six minutes and nobody said anything, so thank you guys for that, but it really pissed me off. So let's talk planning. Okay, so this is, so as far as planning goes, I do have a Notion. I am addicted to it, so we'll just start there. I'm not gonna show a lot of the stuff on my Notion just because this is not a Notion tour. This is just how I make my videos. So I'm gonna show the Notion page that I did for this video. So I've already just talked about all this stuff, right? And especially on the link of Notion, I actually don't use Notion for all of my videos. I use it for ones that need planning, like this one, where I need to remember to like hit certain points. I'll do a bullet point list. I have in the past, like right when I first started my channel, I used to do really exhaustive lists of like what I was gonna talk about, but then I realized that I could just say them. And part of that was like getting used to being on camera and just being more comfortable being on camera and not like forgetting things every time I look into the lens, which is what was happening in the beginning. But if I do 
do an ocean plan, this is usually what I'll do. So I have my video and the status right now is editing, so I'm in editing. I'll choose what type of video it is, so if it's a vlog, painting, art, creating, thoughts and musings, drawing stuff, searchable, or research based, just so I can see what kind of trends I'm doing. Like, am I making a lot of videos where I'm making art? Am I like making a lot of videos where I'm just talking? I try to have a balance of a bunch of different stuff. I'll pick a publish date, so this video will probably go up maybe on Friday. I don't know if it'll go up this Friday, but we'll just say that for now. The edit type is, uh, it's a talking head, but there's also B-roll baby, which is just like, if there's a lot of B-roll or there's a lot of like other stuff happening, which this has the, the Notion part of it, will be on it too, and the edit type. And then content type is, I would say, searchable searchable. Evergreen content is going to be content that is good long term. So like comparing cheap versus expensive gouache versus topical is going to be more time present. So it's like 20 lessons I learned in 2020 is going to be more topical because it's specific to the end of the year. But this is kind of searchable content because it's like how I edit my video. Anyway, if I were to do one for the other video I'm doing today, which is the scratch video, I'll show you how I would do it. So I would do a new one and it would be trying scratch art or whatever. Here's my trying scratch art thing. The status would be filming or in progress. The type is art creating. The publish date is gonna be Wednesday. The edit type is art making, which means to me an art making video is when I have basically a two camera setup and I'm cutting between the two cameras, which is gonna be this camera and then the GoPro over top. Content type is uh, YouTube, if slash when I start making other content for other websites, like maybe TikTok, that'll be an option in there also, but so far they're all YouTube. And then it would be, I guess it's searchable. It's not really topical or evergreen, it's just kind of like something whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I pull up my video template and it loads. And this is all it says. So basically it's notes, filming, the dull stuff, and vibe check. Vibe check has, if I wanna like break down what I want the vibe to be, which honestly I don't really use any of these, but the dull stuff is gonna be title, description, tags, comments. So if I'm workshopping some titles, I'll check and see how they perform on TubeBuddy with the search engine, and then I'll try, try a couple things. I don't really put the description of the tags in, I usually just put those into the video. But if I reach a point where I'm working with somebody else, like I have an editor or I have an assistant helping me make these videos, this kind of setup is a lot easier, so I can just pass that information off to them. I'm not at that point right now, but I like to just like have that kind of thing implemented because I worked on the receiving end of somebody else's channel. It just helps a lot to be like, these are all the things I'm thinking, I'm just gonna pass them off to you. So you're just totally clicked in because I think communication really makes a difference. And if you have those systems in place already, then it's not hard to integrate them when the time comes. Not that I think that that's happening anytime soon, but you know, whatever, Maybe, who knows? <laughs> so the notes for this, I really don't have any notes, but this is what this would look like if I were trying to make a setup. So maybe a note would be described ISO, mention prices of the scratch pads. And then something I always forget to do is take a thumbnail picture. So maybe I'll say, don't forget thumbnail pic. Or even in my Notion template, I could just add a to-do where I say, take thumbnail. And we can just systematize it. It's amazing. So anyway, that's my Notion planning setup. I also wanted to really quickly go over my <laughs> file storage convention system, just because this is part of the process, you know, like how all this stuff is saved and organized is part of like how my systems run. So I have this external hard drive, it's called Metropolis 2020 for convenience, I guess. So basically there's folders for YouTube, Patreon, and TikTok. I don't really make any TikToks, so there's only two clips in there. And Patreon basically just has my monthly videos that I make and any other like channel page, art stuff that I need. But YouTube is my main folder for this external hard drive. So again, this is a five terabyte hard drive, which is massive. This is already my second one, <laughs> but it has all of my videos that I've made thus far on it. So in the 2020 folder, I have videos and the archive, and then in videos, basically, it's all 58 videos I made in 2020. And then a couple of videos that didn't make it or haven't been finished yet. In 2021, same thing, except there's just videos because there is no archive yet. It has all the videos that I've made so far this year. So I just number my videos. I don't date the videos because I don't know for sure when I'm gonna publish them until they're up. So I just would rather keep a count of how many videos I'm making just so I have it for my own sake. So for the scratch art video, I have, it's gonna be video number 66. This video that you're watching right now is gonna be 67 unless I move it, which is possible I might. And in that case, I'll change the files and all that stuff. But in the scratch art video, I would then open up my Premiere and then I'd create a new project, which I would save in the scratch art folder. So in videos in 2021, scratch art, and then it would be also titled 066 scratch art and that would save that in there and then i would create a new sequence also called 066 scratch art if i'm editing and there's clips that don't make the cut that i want to keep because i think they're funny or something i'll also make a timeline called scraps 
and then I'll just put them in the scraps. And that's also if I'm like trying to cut between two things, sometimes I don't do that, but. So I'm gonna film the clips and then I'll import them and then we'll pick back up in a second. So let me just cut, cut this clip so I can go edit, go film. Okay, hold on, be right back. All right, so I just finished filming. I am going to clean up my setup. I actually wanna show you something in the meantime. I'm gonna use my phone to film this. When I'm filming, something about this mirrorless camera body is that for some reason, the LED lights start banding with the camera so I'll show you what that looks like if I can so I'll put in a clip where you can see where that happens really bad but I did find something that fixes that which is setting the shutter speed on my camera to 1 60th because I guess that's the same speed of an LED light which is like I don't really know how light bulbs work I'm gonna be completely honest but that seems to have worked but what that does is it makes it really difficult to adjust the lighting because I'm stuck in a divisible by 60 shutter speed which the camera doesn't really do that like there isn't 120 there's 125 and whatever anyway so that's how I fix that and then usually I have the zebra settings on zebra stripes on so I'll film it with the camera so you can see hello <laughs> okay so you can see these stripes that are happening behind me these are zebra stripes and they basically show you where the camera is blown out so I when I'm adjusting my light these days, I use my f-stop, which lets in more light. So if you'll see, f1.4 is as low as this camera goes. I'm totally washed out, you'll see in the shot. But if the lighting was less bright, like perhaps like this, I'm lit a little bit better, but still not correctly. So I'll show you what I do. I like the really even light of the softbox light and the, how white it is. So when I'm lighting myself, Usually I will go till I have some zebra stripes on my face, which means it's blown out and then I'll back off one So by backing off one that puts me in correct lighting and everything else is bright It still is kind of washed out But one of my biggest complaints with this camera is the LCD screen is very inaccurate I'll shoot the photos thinking they're correctly lit and then I'll pull them up on the computer and they look completely different Like they're always too dark So I turned on the zebra stripes so that I could color meter correctly So now I'm going to upload all my footage into my timeline and then we'll start in premiere and I'll start showing you How I do everything in premiere. All right, y'all that is what we have for today's video Next week's video on Friday is gonna be the rest of this video part two if you will of how I actually break down my edits and how I actually do my edits. We're going to sit in Premiere Pro together. And you're going to watch me do my little dancey dance across the keyboard. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sophia Jablos. I'm an artist and a video maker, I guess. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next, you should click on this video. And then if you want to see more stuff about my YouTube growth in this playlist, you should watch that also. I love you. This video was quite the undertaking, so I hope you appreciate at least the beginning of it. I hope you enjoy the second half when it comes comes out next week. Bye!